All right, so I know you've been waiting on this video for a while. If you follow us on Instagram, we mentioned that we were gonna do a video on making checkbook covers. Finally got it done. Uh, just no excuse, just been busy on some other things, but we got the project done. Um, it's been done. I finally got the, pro, uh, the pattern pack done and all that kind of stuff. So everything's ready to go. And in this video, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to make these. Now there's not a lot to these checkbook covers. Mine are pretty simple. There's two pockets on the inside, one on each side that hold the checkbook and the registry, and then they're lined, and that's it. I cut them out of five, six ounce leather for the, for the outside, and then the inside you can use two, three, three, four. I would recommend using lighter weight leather, like a two, three, um, or even some nice kangaroo on the inside for the liner and the pockets, just because it'll fold a little bit easier. Um, these are all veg tan, and they make really nice uh, checkbook covers, but what I end up having to do is after you'll see in the video as I Spray down the inside with some water just to get it kind of damp and then we'll really try to tease this this bend here So that they'll lay flat. These are brand new. They haven't ever been carried and so they kind of want to pop open like this So what I do is I have some rubber bands over there and I put those on there uh, these just stay on my desk and uh, in, in a little spot there on our desk so we know where they are. And so I just keep a rubber band on them until they get some age on them and kind of get carried and bumped around and abused a little bit. Then they'll start to close uh, much easier. But if you do, if you do line them with something even thinner than, than or softer than a, uh, than a veg tan, like a kangaroo uh, leather or something like that, uh, your preference of lining leather, they will fold a lot easier. But they make really good gifts. They're really easy to make. Uh, we do have a pattern pack for this and it's got 12 different tooling patterns. Now in the pattern pack, I did just the tooling window for the front. So there's 12 different tooling windows. So each sheet will have two separate patterns on there and you can use both of them if you want. They really don't match each other. They're two completely different patterns. But what I usually do is do a floral pattern on the front of the checkbook and then on the back, I just do a geometric, either a basket stamp, you could even just border this. Uh, whatever you wanted to do, just leave it plain, put your maker stamp in the back, something like that, real simple, but I do just the floral on the front. You could also just double that pattern, do the same on the front and the back. I like the separation, having two different patterns, the basket stamp on the back, floral on the front, because when I go to use this checkbook cover, I know which way to open it. Um, something small, it's kind of dumb, but for me, it just makes it easier, just user friendly. But that's both of these. We do these two in the video. I'm gonna show you how to do those. Let's get started. All right, so here I've rolled out a few different little weights here. Mainly three, four, and five, six is what I've got here. Um, and that piece that I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out of, I'm gonna cut them out of five, six. On the pattern pack, I mentioned using five, six for the body, and that's usually what I use. Um, I have made these where I've done the body, the liner, and the pockets all out of three, four. So if you're making these and all you've got is three to four ounce leather and that's what you want to make them out of they will work absolutely fine i just if i'm going to do floral tooling i would prefer just a little bit heavier weight of leather and so that's why i went with the five six and have used that for the bulk of the ones that i build but it does make them a little bit heavy but a good piece of five six or maybe just a little extra heavy three four ounce is perfectly fine but when it comes for the liner and the pockets i would definitely do that no heavier than three to four ounce um, and, and actually on the liner section, you can use a two to three ounce and for the pockets as well, but I would keep those all light. But if you're wanting to tool them, a little bit heavier leather for the body piece is absolutely fine. Now right here, I went and grabbed a side of two to three ounce that I had, and I'm gonna cut the liners out of that. Like I said, I'm gonna try to keep that really light, and that way it bends really nicely whenever we fold these in half after we're done. So I went ahead, I didn't have enough scrap of two to three ounce, I tend to go through that pretty quickly. So I had to cut that out of a full side. There's all our pieces, two pockets, one liner, and one body per checkbook cover. And here we're gonna go ahead and just tape these up. I'm just gonna use blue painter's tape. You can certainly use uh, poster board like we do on our belts if you'd like but I didn't see any need to with these, so we're just gonna use the tape. That's just gonna keep them from stretching when we tool them.
All right, so now here we're at the tooling bench. I'm gonna go ahead and mark center, um, and that's off the seven and a half inch uh, length on that, and we'll mark center, and then I do a half inch on each side of that mark, and that gives us one inch worth of fold space in the middle, and that'll begin to line out our tooling windows. And we're gonna go ahead and get these drawn up. We're just gonna show some of the tooling in here. Like we say all the time, we've got a lot of videos on there that are devoted to tooling, but here we'll show some of the tooling, but not all of it. I'm gonna tool two separate ones. You'll get to see the tooling of one of them, and then um, the other one, you'll just get to see it finished. But we did do two of them, or tooled two different patterns for these. And both of these patterns are in that pattern pack, minus our brand. So I ended up two-toning both of these checkbook covers. This black one here, with, or the one with the brand, we just did the outside edge of it black. I didn't do the background because I didn't want the brand to disappear. Would have been just a little bit too much black, so we just did the outer edge. All right, so now we've got the, both of those two-toned, uh, both of them tooled, both of them two-toned. Now we're gonna go ahead and just put our oil on there. I do all of my dye work and paint work before I oil. And so we're just using olive oil here. We're just gonna put a good coat on there and let that even out and settle in. So now we're gonna use our tan coat. That's what I use for my resist on antiquing. We're gonna antique both of these. That oil has had time to dry. It's probably been an hour, two hours, and it looks nice and even. So we're gonna go ahead and put a good coat of tan coat on there and let those dry for probably an hour or so before we antique them. And here I'm just using what I always use, which is a dark brown uh, antique paste from Fibings. And we're just gonna work that in really well, get it down into all the crooks and crannies, crevices, cuts, decorative cuts, undercuts, all that. Be sure you don't have any spots you missed. Just work it around in there real good. And then we'll buff that out and put our final coat of tan coat on. And uh, we do have a video on our antiquing process if you'd like to see that. All right, so now while those dry uh, with that final coat of tan coat, we're gonna go ahead and edge and slick our pockets. You don't have to do this if you would prefer not to. Um, if your edgers aren't really sharp, you can kind of booger the edge up on these, these this thin leather for these pockets. But if you've got a good edger, I think it looks nice. I think it's a nice touch to go ahead and, 
slick those edges and uh, we do have a video as well on slicking edges and uh, slicking edges on thin leathers as well but we'll go ahead and get that done on all four pockets while we're waiting All right, and our tan coat is dried really good. These are completely finished, the bodies are. And so we'll go ahead and pull that painter's tape off. Be sure and pull the tape and hold the body down to the bench as you pull that tape. Otherwise you can chance stretching or wrinkling that body leather. So I hold it flat on the bench and pull the tape off of the leather, not vice versa. All right, so now we're here at the glue bench and we're gonna go ahead and put our liners down and then our bodies down, face down, and what we'll do is go ahead and put one coat of glue. We're gonna do two coats. I do two coats on almost everything, but we're just using contact cement. Contact cement I use just comes from Lowe's or Home Depot, but just put you a good coat on there and let that dry. We'll put a fan on it and let that dry real good, and then we'll come back with a second coat. All right, our glue is dry and nice and tacky, and so we'll go ahead and glue our bodies to our liners. Just you wanna glue them nice and flat, um, again, that little bit of feather right there, making the liner a little bit larger, allow you to line them up a lot easier where you don't have to try to just be pitch perfect here trying to line them up. You've got a little bit of slack in there. So we'll go ahead and glue those down. Now we're here at the bench. I'm going to go ahead and take my glass slicker and just be sure we get a good contact um, adhesion there between the liner and the body, especially when you're going to fold something in half like that. You want to be really sure that it's glued down good. And then I'm just going to take a razor blade and trim off that excess feather. We're going to do that now because we need to be able to see where the edge of the checkbook is when we glue the pockets in. So we'll just take a blade and just trim that excess off. Try to trim it straight. Keep your blade and everything flush with the body of the checkbook cover. And it should trim off really nice and it'll cut down on the amount of sanding you'll have to do. All right, now I'm gonna take the checkbook. Be sure you've got it facing the right way where the pockets are gonna go and the fold and everything. But we're gonna pull in about three inches um, it takes exactly three inches. Those pockets are three inches and an eighth uh, deep. And so if we do three inches, it'll allow a little bit of overhang on the bottom end. So we'll just mark those three inches. That just tells us where our glue is going to go. And we'll mark both of these. And then we'll put glue every, from those marks around to the other mark. And then on the other end. And then on the pockets as well. And we'll glue those pockets in. Now this is a step that I like to do, uh, especially if you're sewing on a smaller machine, uh, is to go ahead and knock off just the top corners of those pockets. It's just a nice, a nice little touch. It, it gives a nice smooth transition from the pockets to the rest of the deal. You don't have a bump there. And then here we're just going to go ahead and put that glue. Don't get too wide on your glue path along this edge because you're going to come back in and have to break that glue loose for the checkbook to be able to slide in there. So you just want a small bead of glue around there just to hold those pockets down while you're trying to sew them. I am putting a second coat here. I do two coats on everything, it's just kind of a habit, but it glues really well. All right, so our glue is dry, tacky. We're gonna go ahead and glue these in. They're real simple, just line them up with your three inch marks that you put on there on the top edge of those pockets, glue them down, and, um, and then we'll hammer them in a little bit, make sure they're stuck good, and then we'll groove them and we'll be ready to go. All 
concrete. So now I'm going to groove these. I am using just my little craft tool groover. This is a groover that I use when I'm sewing on the Singer machine because it's a smaller, leaves a smaller groove. I ended up sewing them on the Cobra, as you'll see in a second. Um, and they sewed up beautifully and, and absolutely fine. But um, I just kind of changed my mind after I grooved them. Otherwise, I would have used the Horseshoe brand groover. It just cuts a little wider groove. So we're going to go ahead and sew these on the Cobra Class 4. I'm actually sewing these with a number 25 needle and my 207 thread, which is what I always use. That's actually the same setup I use on saddles. It sewed up really good. I didn't notice I had the bigger needle in there until after they were sewn, but they, I didn't see any difference. It sewed up great, um, even with that lightweight of leather. All right, these are almost wrapped up. We're gonna go ahead and cut our stitches, uh, the little excess threads. Um, you can pull them, pull them out the back and burn them down if you want. I just trim them down in the channel, um, tight and close and, and they're fine. But then we'll go ahead and trim off that excess off the pockets that's overhanging and then we'll sand, edge, and slick. We have a video on how we sand, edge, and slick so you can certainly check that out. But we're gonna go ahead and trim these and get them ready for sanding and stuff like that. Here's a trick when you're doing your corners, if you've got a sharp corner like that, if you'll just lob off the tip of that corner, then when you go to sand it, it'll make that corner really uh, rounded off. It won't be real sharp. So if you don't want real sharp corners, just knock the tip off on each corner uh, just a little bit, and then when you sand it, it'll sand round. So now our edges have dried some and uh, they're, they're nice and dry. And so we're gonna go ahead and put some dye on those. I'm using the black dye on the black checkbook cover and the brown dye on the brown one, obviously. And I'm just using that regular pro old dye from Five Bings. But just be real careful. Don't get it everywhere whenever you dye on those edges. Those sometimes can be a little bit tricky.
these are absolutely ready to go. All we've got to do now is fold them. I like to take and spray the interior of the checkbook a little bit with some water, just plain water. Don't saturate it, just spray it a little bit and then fold them in half, make sure they line up and everything. And then just tease that edge with your fingers. Don't hammer it. If you hammer that, sometimes that seam will crack. And so I like to just kind of real gently just tease that down. Um, again, if you use a softer liner like a kangaroo or something, they'll fold over much easier. But that's how I do them. I just kind of do that. And a lot of times I'll tie them with a piece of string or something, and tie them to get tie them to where they're shut, and let them dry in front of a fan with them tied like that. What's really going to help them to stay shut and shut well is going to be um, just use and breaking them in and stuff. Yeah, I, I guess you could groove that or channel that out in that bend area, and that would help them fold a lot better there too. So that's it guys, that's making a checkbook cover. Like I've mentioned before, there's not a lot of construction tips in this video. These are pretty simple to make. They're a really popular gift item around Christmas time. They make good Father's Day gifts, Mother's Day gifts, stuff like that. They're one of those items, kind of like the knife scabber. We used to kind of keep a few of these made up, just basket stamp or maybe throw some floral on it or something like that and keep those available for folks looking for that already made gift that they want to give out for Christmas or birthday or something like that. But they are, they're also a good way to use up your scraps. If you're cutting a lot of belts out, you're going to end up with a lot of bellies, necks. Uh, if you cut them the way I cut them, you're going to end up with some bellies and necks and stuff, especially on that lining material, that three, four ounce. And that's perfect for stuff like this. But this checkbook covers six and three quarter by seven and a half. And so that really makes it easy to cut out. It's not a lot of leather. And so it's a good way to use up your scraps and kind of make some little items that, that sell really well and stuff like that. But they're pretty easy to make. You can have a lot of fun with them. Uh, if you do decide to get the pattern pack, like I said, uh, there's 12 different tooling patterns. Here's the pattern pack here. We printed it out to kind of show you on the video. Like I said, there's not a lot to this thing. Six and three quarter by seven and a half. The six and three quarter is the side to side. So the seven and a half gives you enough for the fold, um, for it to fold in half. And the pattern pack just got that and the liner and uh, the pocket pattern that I drew. Again, not real hard. Uh, to come up with for yourself, but it does have 12 different tooling patterns in here. We've got some fun ones in here. I've got one that's got daisies on it and a little bit more complicated one. I've got one in here that's got more of a corner tool set so you could do some basket stamping on the front or any other kind of geometric stamp. That one really looks clean and it tools up really fast so you could make a bunch of these really quickly and they look expensive because they've got just enough floor on them. They really, really look nice and they sell really well. And then I've got a kind of traditional oak leaf and a traditional Sheridan kind of looking pattern. Got one with a poinsettia and a daisy or a uh, sunflower pattern in there. And then this one here, I kind of did one where it's got a blank spot in the middle for a brand or initials or something like that. Some of these have a space for initials in the corner, as you can see there and there. Um, but yeah, if you want the pattern pack, it is on the website. There's a link down in the description. So if you want to purchase that pattern pack, there is a link down in the description of this video, so you can look down there. Remember that all of our patterns are digital, and so when you buy that pattern pack, you'll get an email that has a link in there for you to download the file, just a PDF file, and then you print it out on your own printer, or you can take it to a copy place or something like that and print it out there if you'd like. When you go to print it out, be sure and check. I put the measurements on the pattern pack so that you can check to make sure that it's measuring correctly. Sometimes your printer will try to scale it up or down or try to fit it to the page. I don't know why it does that. Modern technology, it's beyond my pay, pay grade, but you need to be sure that you got your printer settings set right so that when you print it out, you can check these measurements to make sure that it's actually correct. Um, as long as one of them is right, the rest of them will be correct as well. And so you can go from there. On the liner, some people are unfamiliar with the way that I build things. So if you haven't watched this whole video or purchased this thing, you might not even see this, but the liner is bigger than the body, and that's on purpose. I like to leave a little feather around the edge of anything I'm gluing together, and that way I can glue it together. It gives you a little bit of leeway there when you're lining up, and then once it's glued and sewn together, you can trim that excess off. So I trim liner to body, so that's just how I do it. I've had a few people email with concerns about, you know, on different projects we've done where the liner is bigger than the body. That's done on purpose. That way you don't have to line it up perfectly. You've got a little bit of leeway there where you can kind of move it around and get everything lined up and then just trim that excess off and everything. Your edge will be completely flush. But yeah, if you want that pattern, it is on there. Like I said, it's on the website. Click that link. If you don't get an email, it may go to your spam folder. If you don't get that email, 
Go back to our website under Leatherworker Resources. You can click on My Store Account, log in using your email and password. Any pattern you ever buy from us will be stored right there. You can re-download them anytime. So if you lose a file, you don't even have to really keep up with that. It'll be on the website. You'll always be able to re-download it if you need to. But I appreciate y'all watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, shoot us some email with pictures of these. If you make some of these during Christmas time, again, these are really good. Make a couple of them, pop them on your social media. I bet you'll get a few orders. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next project video.